there are a whole host of education stories that have come out this week. So the Labour Party dropped the Conservative government's free speech law, uh, which actually would have put a, a, a statutory requirement on universities to actually enshrine free speech protections, and they, which they simply don't. Right? I've been on un university campuses myself where events have been cancelled because of who I am and what I do. Uh, whilst, you know, that would never happen for, say, Dr. Schola, the race baiter, went along and did an event, they would be uh, supremely relaxed about her presence. But the government dropped this speech law and the Telegraph say that they dropped it for fear of China, Chinese interests are no longer being aligned with the United Kingdoms, as in perhaps there could be a debate in universities about Taiwan uh, and actually the, the, the impinge, infringement on their sovereignty from China, from the Chinese Communist Party. And I just thought it was really, really quite troubling and worrying that we're giving up free speech in Britain in the breeding grounds for the next generation in our universities, they, they, where they should be expanding their horizons, their minds, and uh, open themselves up to new ideas and all these other things. But instead, we're kowing to the Chinese communists. And I said, I think this is the most pathetic government excuse for, for a government that I've ever known or read of in my life. But then it gets worse. Because Ofsted marked down, Ofsted are the regulator for schools and, uh, and universities in this country, and they marked down a school in Lincolnshire for being too white. So they said that the inspectors found that it didn't have enough black or Asian children to actually get a decent grade by Ofsted. So they marked it down for that reason. Do you think if an Ofsted regulator went out to a school and said that it was too black or too Asian, that they would keep their jobs? I certainly don't. And then it gets even worse still. Teachers are to be trained to challenge whiteness in schools. Guidance created for teacher training courses ensures that future educators are anti-racist and prepared to implement this in the classroom. Teachers will be instructed in how to disrupt the centrality of whiteness in schools, according to a best practice document. The term whiteness in critical race theory refers to social attitudes considered normal by white people, and guidance suggests that concepts including meritocracy, objectivity and individualism should be questioned. And these are documents that are being used by officials uh, and endorsed by universities offering teacher training, including Edinburgh, Glasgow and Newcastle, along with the National Education Union, the biggest trade union for the education sector in the country. And then we're still, I, I'm still going on, folks. I'm not done yet. In Birmingham... There was a no white sign graffiti scrolled across a wall and it's been investigated by the police. I damn well bet you my The wall of a dollar. primary school, by the way. The wall of a primary school, exactly. So they're all mm -hmm. education themed. And it says no whites and it appeared in three locations with CCTV capturing the moment hooded figures sprayed on one wall outside a primary school. But you see what I'm getting at here, right? It, the, the idea that there's not some kind of bias against white people that's prevalent throughout the university and education sector throughout the whole of it. The teachers are being exposed to it. The students are being exposed to it. Birmingham schools are being exposed to it. It, it just, it's, we are going in entirely the wrong direction. And I really worry, and I mean this with every fibre of my being, I've been in South Africa four times and I think we're heading in that direction where we are pitting ethnic group against ethnic group. And it is it is enabled and championed by the state. The state regulators are doing this. I bet you the no white sign on a primary school, those people conveniently won't be found. And if they are found, they won't be dragged through a 24 hour court like all of these people involved with riots are posting things after two glasses of Chardonnay on Facebook. And we are just getting into an incredibly dangerous, perilous position as a nation and someone asked in the comments, what do we do about it? Well, I tell you what we don't do about it. We don't vote for the bloody Labour Party. And frankly, right now, I wouldn't vote for the Conservative Party either, because this is just going to get worse if we continue to do that. We've got to break free from the two uh, uniparties and actually start coming up with actual alternatives to all of this before it gets a high level lot worse. Because, Nicholas, one thing's for certain. You say that it's laudable to live in a, a colourblind society. Well, right now, your colour is the only thing 
thing that matters when it comes to the establishment in this in this nation and that's that's dangerous that is so dangerous Oh, of course, 100 percent. And uh, this anti-white narrative is uh, completely it's embedded in academia. Now, I just finished my master's at St. Andrews and mm. uh, even at my undergrad in Durham, I, I did history and they have these classes that you're uh, used to be forced to attend them. However, now not so much. However, you're heavily encouraged to attend. It's almost like two minute hate. It's called decolonizing the curriculum in which is basically I went out of morbid curiosity to one of them and it's essentially, it's essentially an hour of being told it's not okay to be white and that you're a racist by virtue of your skin color and another very strange aspect of the decolonizing the curriculum program is now the recontextualizing of historical figures as transgender i went to one in which they said the last kaiser of germany wilhelm ii was transgender because he was angry and invaded uh, russia which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. So it's not just anti-whiteness, it's anti-masculinity as well. It's attempting to mm, force this weird yeah, gender true. queer narrative down our throats. It's, it's all of this. It's all so bizarre. And I am very, very, very familiar with events being cancelled. I'm sure you're all very well aware of what happened at the Durham Union a few months ago with the uh, outrage um, over the uh, Hamas uh, Israel debate that occurred. Yeah, I yeah. Uh, attended the Durham Union. I was a member of the Durham Union my uh, last year at Durham before I went off to St. Andrews. And I knew people who were in that building who were absolutely terrified for their lives, thinking they were going to be killed. I knew, uh, I know many Jewish people at, uh, at Durham. You know, I'm, I'm a part of that whole community. So I, I know basically everybody who's Jewish at Durham and they were absolutely terrified. You had people wearing balaclavas outside of the Union Hall throwing stuff, chanting death to Jews and death to Israel, and uh, effectively calling for blood. And yet the university didn't do anything to punish these people, yet the people who organized the event were punished. And that is truly, truly, truly tragic. And mm -hmm. what's even more tragic is the fact that we can't have any debates anymore. Like, for example, everybody, you couldn't have a controversial speaker at the St. Andrews Union Debate Society, otherwise the university would push back against that. And of course, that was when we had that uh, vile rector who has since been sacked by the university for inflaming anti-Jewish, uh, anti-Israel protests on campus, in which I was subject to abuse as well, and so were other members of the St. Andrews Jewish community. A and it's just well and truly shocking. What we're seeing right now in education is the intermingling of activism and education in fact, I had a professor who opened up his class after buying everybody a bunch of a uh, whole big box of donuts. So I originally liked him a lot. And then he immediately came out and said, oh, by the way, I'm a Marxist. And then mm. I, I sort of was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Were you buttering me up with the donuts then, you know, before you uh, drop this bombshell on the class? <laughs> but it, it's, it's completely and utterly ridiculous. These people are brazen about their political affiliations. And I am legitimately quite afraid that I could have some backlash. I remember when I went in for a meeting with one of my professors recently, recently after i started doing uh, this political stuff and reform uk this was after i met nigel at the rally and he'd seen all the photos and he was very icy with me very icy with me so god knows what i'm going to get on my dissertation now but uh, no it's uh, uh, the whole what's happening at our universities is a disgrace and it's only going to get worse as more deising as more dei programs are introduced and scrapping you know, the free in... speech bill exactly exactly <laughs> I'll tell you something right now. I know several people who have been dragged before committee even before the free speech bill was um, dismissed by this new Labour government, before it was withdrawn, who have been dragged before committee at university for saying stuff that would be considered politically incorrect. And it is a joke and it's only going to get worse. We are entering an almost uh, neo-McCarthyite period in this country. Yes, I think that's uh, this right. Is, uh, not Exactly, exactly, exactly. It, it's it, I like to call it the free speech scare because we are terrified, especially at universities, of freedom of speech these days. Universities are meant to be bastions of liberty. You're able yes. to debate. Well, I remember going back to you, um, Darren, on being threatened. I had a professor at Oxford University send me a death threat about two months ago, a legitimate death threat saying that uh, if she ever saw me, she would shoot me. And I reported it to the police and uh, nobody bothered to uh, investigate that, even though it was a legitimate death threat made against me. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. There is no guarantee of free speech on our university campuses anymore. Yes. And you know what's going to happen? This is all designed to ensure that people like me 
are too afraid to speak out. People who go against the grain, who don't agree with all this politically correct nonsense, are too afraid to speak out because I had family members call me up and say, Nicholas, 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 they, they could stop you from graduating over this. And it was a real, real, real worry for me. It was a real worry, but I've graduated now, so they can't touch me anymore. But, you know, looking back, it was a, a real culture of fear that uh, several leftists on campus were attempting to cultivate. And I think it's only going to get worse with the uh, removal of the free speech bill. It's terrible. Yes. It's truly terrible. Chloe, mm. Chloe, one of our commenters, Charlie, says... Um, <clears throat> It's disgusting. I spoke up about young people changing their, their gender and how it was wrong, and I was investigated. There's just going to, one, I think that the good teachers who don't, who think like this, who have their own sense of their own faculties and aren't some Marxist ideologue, mm. uh, I actually will leave the profession altogether out of fear, as Nicholas put it, that there is this sort of McCarthyite putsch against them and actually leave the, the sector outright and then you'll just be left with the the ideologues who do want to go first. along with this if yes indeed mm. if they don't get fired first so yeah so yeah. i i think that it is really really sad what has happened to our education system both that you know the secondary school primary and universities britain used to have one of the best university uh, systems in the world. I mean, there's a reason why students from all over the world are absolutely desperate to come and study in Britain. We really, really should be proud of the education system that we have, or I should say had past tense, because now it has just fallen apart. And, you know, I think, you know, I say just bulldoze all the universities now because they're, they're full of bin. I mean, students come out of there worse than they go in. They come out with fewer thinking skills, less ability to engage in debate. Uh, I don't think they really learn much. I think it's absolutely horrendous. And it's a very hostile environment now um, for anybody on the right, student or academic. I mean, I one of my politics tutors uh, was was a right a right wing tutor and he was constantly telling me stories of other colleagues of his just being thrown under the bus, fired, losing their jobs, and how how difficult it was from the uh, professors as perspective um, and then from the students perspective right I I graduated last summer and it wasn't until the moment that I left that I started making politics videos online because I knew that mm -hmm. there was just no way yes. that I could get away with it and going back specifically to to Charlie's um, point I mean I was terrified to say anything about the gender debate at university because I knew that I would be exiled and banished and banned from any society if I dare said that there are only two genders um but oh, my, well, I was. Um, I was. my my so. my 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 brother who uh, uh perhaps perhaps was a bit more ballsy than me um he was a uh, before he started at university, he was put into the university's like LGBT society group chat and he got into some debate on there and my brother said in the group chat that he doesn't think that under 16s should be allowed to medically transition. Seems like a reasonable point of view, right? Yes. Um, he was Brilliant. he was kicked out. He was kicked out the chat, banned from the society. And then when he got to university, um, the people from the LGBT society they bullied him. They were horrible to him. My brother wanted to go to the the glitter ball, which is like the LGBT uh, ball that they have once a year. And they said, um, you know, oh, if Dobbs turns up, we're going to milkshake him. And it was horrible. I mean, these are the people who claim that they're in inclusive. Uh, yeah. and respectful of everyone regardless of who they are but you know mm. it's a it's diversity of everything except thought yes it, it no it is it, it absolutely is and that's sanctioned by the state though chloe right that it, that is the 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 fish rots from the head right mm. and i think the the fish is very much rotten at the head and the tories did absolutely fuck all about it for 14 years so it's been allowed to fester and actually grow and get a hell of a lot worse it's seeped through every institution you can possibly think of we were talking earlier about Ofcom. It, all the regulators are infected by this. And this toxic ideology is running through the next generation. You know, when I think of my my beautiful niece, I, I, I dread to think what kind of society she's going to grow up in. Mm -hmm. But that's why, you know, I'm not I'm not going to be intimidated by threats and stuff like that. I am going to continue speaking up about this because I've for the last four years that I've been running Reasoned, the, 
a number of young people who have said to me, I just feel far too scared to actually contribute to Reasoned because I'm worried about the repercussions for me personally, whether that be at my university or whether that be in my future career. Now, it never used to be like that, right? We used to be able to disagree with each other and actually have discussion and debate. Well, that's been entirely precluded now because you might say something that's not politically correct and offensive to somebody and end up getting a non-crime hate incident or something like that against you. And I tell you what, once Labour actually uh, put into law the fact that Islamophobia will be part of counter-terrorism strategy and you'll be reported to the Prevent Programme and all the rest of it if you if you argue against any key tenets of, of that religion in the, not, in the same way you, you, you would get away with for doing it when it comes to Christianity. Otherwise, we would have locked up Rowan Atkinson for quite some time. And... Th- the, these things are just going to get worse. Speech, Britain is not free when it comes to speech debate and all the rest of it. Britain is not free in many ways. And the Tories allowed that to happen, then the Labour Party will run with it. And mm. I feel actually, I know there are some Conservative supporters in this group, but I feel deep, deep anger and resentment toward the Conservative Party for allowing this to fester. Because I do blame them for not nipping this in the bud early doors and actually allowing it to run rampant. Have you got what it takes to be a reasoned presenter? Well, send us a short clip of yourself to join at reasoned.uk and we might be seeing you on this very channel very soon indeed.